I heard you talking about property rights yesterday. It made me curious. Do you mind? Of course not. First off, I agree with most other libertarians that property rights are absolute. Where my difference lies is that I believe property rights have one limit, they end where the property ends. You cannot claim ownership of your neighbor's house just because it is adjacent to or even surrounded by your property. Your property lines are where your property rights end. That's obvious. The same goes for smaller pieces of property where people are allowed to enter. We each carry with us a me-shaped bubble of our own personal property wherever we go. It consists of your body, your clothing, and the space between the two. No one can eliminate your rights to this property. No one, under any circumstance, can trump your right to your own body, and that includes what is inside your clothing, as long as it doesn't make an appearance or leak out, like radiation or viruses could. I'm with you so far. My body does not become your property even if it is on your property with permission. My property bubble extends to the outer surface of my clothing because my clothes are still my clothes even if I am allowed on your property. Your property rights end at my surface and go no deeper. So, anything beneath the surface of my clothes, as long as it remains there, is occupying only my property. What if I insist your rights don't apply on my property? You can insist, but the demand is no more valid than the demand that I become your slave if I'm on your property. Slavery is not okay just because you only do it in your own home. Anyone evil enough to make the demand that you relinquish your rights in order to enter their property is someone you should avoid if at all possible. You can cooperate or not as you see fit, but I don't consider it noble to submit to bad guys. What if I can get you to sign a contract and give up your rights? No one has the right or the authority to make a contract which trades your rights for the privilege of entering their property. They have the right to not allow you on their property at all, or they have the right to ask you to leave if for some reason they decide they do not like you or what you have on your body. And if you attack or steal while on their property they have the right to use violence against you in defense. But there are laws. There is no need for laws that affirm your right to not be raped while away from home. So it is, with all your rights. No one can claim that by hiring you or opening for business their act changes your rights in any way. That would mean you have no inalienable rights, only privileges. You have rights on your own property. Why expect more? If you have no bubble of personal property when you leave your home, on your body or in your vehicle, then the real world implication is that you have no rights at all except when you stay home by yourself. Anywhere you go, the property owner can demand that you hand over your money, your clothing, or your life. After all, someone claims every square inch of land you must cross as you go about your day, even if it is only the government making that claim. Some places post signs forbidding guns. Shouldn't you ask if you don't see a sign? I am not going to, nor should I have to, ask every property owner if I am allowed to enter his property hole when the property is open to the public or if I get an invitation. Do I also need to ask if my underwear, my brand of deodorant, or my private thoughts are acceptable? My gun is no more dangerous to the innocent than any of those things. It is a dangerous precedent to single out guns as the only thing that we need to declare to everyone, everywhere we go. This is what hoplophobes and tyrants would like us to do, think about guns differently than any other object. So you'll assume it's okay unless you are told otherwise. As I go about my life I assume liberty. Obviously, if you assume liberty, but are then asked to leave by a property owner who doesn't believe in allowing you to be a sovereign individual who is responsible for yourself, by all means, leave and don't go back. The only reason anyone wouldn't want you to be armed is so they can do things to you which you would not allow if you were adequately able to stop them, or because they don't trust you. What about your car in the employer's parking lot? Your property inside your car is also in a personal property bubble. The presence of your car itself is a different matter. No one is obligated to allow it on their property, but once they do, they accept it all as a package deal. Your car is still your property while it is on someone else's lot, and the space inside your car is still completely your property. To claim otherwise is utter authoritarian nonsense and is not consistent with liberty.
Doesn't that mean I am being forced to give up control of my own property? Do you wish to control other people when they are invited to your property? I don't. I have too much respect for you as a whole functioning human being to do that, and too much respect for myself to even think that way. Yes, my real estate is mine and I have absolute rights to it and what is done there, ignoring for a moment the government's myths, but I know and accept that my rights to my property and where your rights to your body begin, even if I have invited you onto my property and you are there. If I don't like that I am not forced to permit anyone to enter my property. I can choose to be a hermit. It is the nature of rights that others have the exact same rights as I do regardless of their location. But entering another's property is a privilege, not a right. I agree. But my body remains my property no matter where I am, because that is the fundamental right. You cannot enter my property without my permission. If I invite you, I will assume you are prepared to be a fully functional human being. Anything less is disrespectful, or worse. If you don't trust someone to be armed, you don't trust them and have no business inviting them onto your property in the first place. Aren't other rights more important than property rights? All rights, at their foundation, are property rights. Do your property rights exist if you don't exist? No. What are property rights? Having property rights means that if you own something, you have the right to use that thing in any way you wish, as long as by doing so you do not violate another person's rights to life, liberty, and property. Are all property rights the same? There are three types of property rights that I can see. There are property rights over your body, which I call bodily property rights or self-ownership. There are property rights over the stuff you own, such as your cars, shoes, knickknacks, and appliances. I call this your stuff rights. Finally, there are property rights over your real estate, your land, home, or a business location, which I call your real estate rights. Okay. Take your living body out of the equation and the other two types of property rights vanish along with all your other rights, except that the property may transfer to someone else after you die. This means that your existence brings into being your bodily property rights, which leads to your rights to own, use, and destroy your stuff and your real estate. So all property rights exist only because you have a living body. Right. If one thing derives from another, then the fundamental thing outranks that which derives from it. That means that your bodily property rights, from which your stuff rights and your real estate rights come, must necessarily come before any other property rights if we are to be consistent. After all, you cannot have a hanged nail if you have no hands or feet. But wouldn't a property owner's rights be more important than your bodily property rights if you are on his property? If you invite someone, can you really demand they leave their bodily property rights behind? Is that even a real invitation? Is such a demand valid or would it violate a person's rights? Do you own the space between the guest's skin and their clothing when they enter your property so that you can dictate what resides there? Does the ownership of that space change as the person travels from place to place throughout the day? That does seem silly. Yes. That doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong, but it should at least cause you to question the mainstream idea more thoroughly. Why do people not accept this view? I suspect it's usually because of a sincere desire to be nice and respectful of the real estate's owner. That is fine. In other cases it's probably because they want to control their guests rather than realizing they shouldn't have invited people they don't trust onto their property to begin with. Do you think this way just because you want to carry a concealed weapon everywhere you go? It's not that I think I have a right to carry a concealed weapon onto other people's property, it is that I don't believe I have a right to forbid such on my own property. If I invite someone, I invite them as a sovereign individual with all their rights fully intact. I have no right to regulate what is in their pockets as long as it stays there. Oh. Okay. If you choose to invite people onto your property, then one of the drawbacks of their choice is that they retain all the rights that come along with a living human body. You can't ask that they give up even the least of their human rights in exchange for passage. Well you can ask but no one is obligated to comply. I can't live with that. Me too.